From high atop the battlements of Castle Kermudge, a new home of Uncle Bosie's Cannibal Cafe, where you might be the diner and you might be the entree. Good evening, Mr. and Mrs. America and all ships at sea. Welcome to the Blast Radio. So glad you could join us. Here is your decline of Western civilization news roundup for the third week of April 2024. Dateline San Francisco. Monday, 15 April. Hundreds of anti-Israel protesters shut down San Francisco's iconic Golden Gate Bridge on Monday amid a wave of protests springing up around the country. NBC Bay Area reported, quote, Activists protesting the war in Gaza shut down Highway 101 on the Golden Gate Bridge Monday morning, snarling the commute into San Francisco and resulting in multiple arrests, end quote. Asked to explain how shutting down traffic on a bridge in California changes the political status quo 7,400 miles away in the Holy Land, the protesters replied, Oh wait, there was no reply, because the dozens of self-described journalists on the scene never thought to ask the question, because they were too busy giving high fives and attaboys and assalamu alaikums to the idiots who were blocking the goddamn road. Oh, you need to get to work in the middle of a work day? Tough shit, racist. You need to get to the hospital? Tough shit. Get colonizer! You think you've got the right to drive on a public roadway just because you pay for the damn thing? Tough shit, you filthy Zionist enabler! And can I also ask, what is the deal with every city council passing some dumb ostentatious ordinance demanding a ceasefire in the Israel-Hamas war? Like, like, like what? A strongly worded statement from the city council of Buttfuck Junction, Ohio is gonna change everything? Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to see American cultural imperialism, the kind and our friends on the left say they are against, look no further than this very phenomenon. American city councils making policy demands of foreign countries. Because I don't even care what city you're in, I know what the residents of that city would rather their elected leaders be doing than cosplaying as wannabe world leaders. Your residents would rather you be getting all the vagrants and drug dealers off the damn streets. You know, since that's like your actual job. Call me crazy. Dateline Waukesha, Tuesday 16 April. Will someone please explain why we can't have nice headlines come out of Waukesha? I was used to imagine Waukesha being a pretty nice middle of the road town up there in cheesehead country somewhere. Somewhere. But we only ever get goddamn horrifying news headlines out of the place, seems like. Like this very headline right here, so I guess I'll just get it over with and, and read the damn thing. Quote, Transgender vampire convicted of sexually assaulting developmentally disabled Wisconsin teen. End quote. You know, has anybody else noticed that people who swap out their wedding tackle and start playing for the other team, they seem to always wind up as really happy, well-adjusted people afterward, don't they? Adam Hetke, a 35-year-old dude who pretends to be a woman named Sabrina, he completed his own sort of special rapey trifecta here, being convicted not only of good old-fashioned sexual assault, but also the special circumstances of threatening the use of a dangerous weapon and perpetrating the act upon a mentally ill, Ill victim. And having seen this dude's shot, I also gotta ask, Adam? May I call you Adam? Because I'm gonna do that whether you want me to or not. If you want to be taken seriously as a woman, Adam, well, first you should stop raping people with your big swinging girl penis. But aside from that, I'm, I'm gonna need to see more effort than just crimping your hair and throwing on some eyeliner and some mascara. Because Alice Cooper puts in more effort than that, and he is not even pretending to be a chick. And I swear to God, if some woke Wisconsin judge sends this dude to a women's prison, I am going to scream out loud right here on the air, so consider yourselves warned. Dateline Cambridge, Massachusetts, Wednesday, 17 April. The Harvard Crimson, that ever-reliable source of unbiased journalism, some might call it the minor leagues of the fake news industrial complex, but that's neither here nor there, has published an editorial stating its firm belief that it's sort of, you know, not really all the way necessarily 100% true that big hulking dudes have a competitive sporting advantage over little dainty women. So when Will Thomas destroys his female competitors by 20 body lengths and then towers over the second and third played finishers by 18 inches on the metal stand, you know, because he's a six foot two, 200 pound grown ass man. You have to not believe your lying eyes or else you're a damned filthy bigot because the editorial board of the Harvard Crimson, they have done a thing that 
big new sludge monger performance artists really love doing, which means they've probably got a bright future in the industry. They take a thing that is self-evidently true, that anybody can figure out who, who is cognitively functional, and they tell you it's not true, and you mustn't believe it. Because the experts say you have to trust, trust this spreadsheet over here with all these little numbers on it, and the experts say that the numbers say that big hulking dudes do not have a measurable physiological advantage over little dainty women. So we, the Harvard Crimson, we are just passing on what the experts have said, because this is all about science, after all. Dateline Washington, Thursday, 18 April. Congresswoman and noted sparkly harder of terrorism, Rashida Tlaib. Would you believe she has been yelling really loudly and calling people racists? I know, it's a lot to take in. Both those things are so out of character for the normally very placid and taciturn Ms. Tlaib. And why is Rashida hallelalalalaing at the moon right now? What dastardly act of anti-Muslim bigotry? has got her kafia in a twist this time? Well, she's pissed off that Ilhan Omar's daughter got suspended from Columbia University for participating in a pro-Hamas demonstration at which various anti-Semitic and genocidal slogans were chanted by the assembled youngsters. And it's interesting, I think, that the universities are, are starting to shut this stuff down and actually impose consequences for it. It's almost like they realize it played really, really badly when those three Ivy League presidents went up to Capitol Hill and hemmed and hawed and prevaricated over whether chance advocating religious mass murder would, in the abstract, violate their campus hate speech policies. But don't tell that to Rashida, because she doesn't want to put that much thought into it. When something bad happens to the Muslim daughter of her ride or die bestie, it can only mean one thing. Whitey is out to get us again, God damn it! and ain't that a son of a bitch. Dateline Bogota. Friday, 19 April, Colombia's far-left socialist president Gustavo Petro proclaimed a new national holiday this week, declaring Friday, April 19th, the first of a yearly civic day of peace with nature. And how is it that Colombians are tasked with celebrating the civic day of peace with nature? Well, pretty much anything that doesn't involve using power or water. Now, if I were a cynical man, if I were inclined to suspect that ulterior motives might possibly be at play here, I might say, you know what this sounds like? This sounds like the government has no idea what it's doing. They're about to lose their ability to provide basic services to the populace, and they need to invent excuses to discourage power and water consumption because you've got two alternatives here, really, and neither of them is all that attractive. You can let basic services collapse, which won't make your government very popular, or you can impose water and power rations and do shutdowns and blackouts and all that fun stuff, which also won't make your government very popular. So, in a desperate attempt to invent a third way solution, they invent a new holiday with no warning, and, and, and the holiday is tomorrow, isn't that exciting? Which, I'm sure that's gonna do wonders for your economy, Chief, when you just canceled a perfectly good work day because you didn't want to get embarrassed when the water and electricity gave out. Now, Best of luck, El Presidente Petro. We will check back on you in six months and see if your head is on a spike. And that, ladies and gentlemen, regrettably, is the end of the roundup for this week, which means it is time for me to transfer command to the loveliest, most talented co-host in the business, the one and only, your friend and mine, Mr. Caucasian Sasquatch. <laughs>